Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, our competitive equilibrium with one period aero securities um, where we have a Markov state. And I just want to add uh, a few things, make a few observations. Um, I'm going to add one. Um, I'm using these, these uh, lecture notes that I had before. Um, this is a description of the, of, of the setting. Um, this is all just all this. We have this value function, and uh, a key thing is here the value function uh, for, a, for a consumer with uh, financial wealth A and Markov state S. There it is. Um, it's the name of the consumer I. Um, I'm taking this. I'm taking this literally from Lundquist Sargent, Chapter Nine, Section Nine Three Three. Um, Okay, there's our budget constraints, non-negativity constraint and consumption. Um, and uh, here's, here's my restrictions on, um, on, these are my debt limits. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I wanna revisit the, and add one thing that I, I should have put in a definition of recursive competitive equilibrium. And it's, and it's this, it's this fourth, it's four, I, <coughs> It's this fourth condition. I want the initial financial wealth factor to satisfy this. I want uh, I want there to be um, zero net. Um, well, I want there to be. Uh, I want I want the the economy to start off with zero net aggregate claims. That's what I want. Um, and. Um, that's what it's going to be, and um, so so that's going to that's going to be that's going to be uh, important. Um, um, so so um, and that's what I've added to what that we had in previous lectures. Um, so. Um, so in order to, um, match, you know, one of our enterprises was, um, yeah, so, so this was fine, but it, it could have me, uh, being in debt and you and, uh, having assets claims on me and we could start the economy off this way. But do you remember, uh, where we started our, uh, studies of chapter nine anyways, we were searching for an equivalence between Aero de Bru with time zero trading once and for all at time zero, and then Aero's idea that you could, you could trade fewer things, but more often. Like as a key idea, and, um, it, it's been used all over finance. Um, Okay, so so to to make those things match up, we're going to have to add another condition beyond here. Um, so and the condition is this: if a, if we want them to match up, we're going to have to impose that everybody starts off with zero financial assets at time zero. Um, so at time zero, we're gonna, everyone's going to start off. Um, and it turns out this condition, remember we start off in a particular Markov state that we choose, the model builder. We assume that was known. Uh, and we're starting off, so everybody just starts off with uh, zero uh, financial wealth. So th this is the key sense. This is what assures that at time zero, the present value of each agent's consumption equals the present value of his endowment stream. And that matches the single budget constraint uh, that everybody face, that each person faces in in the arrangement with all trades at time zero. So this is what we need. You know, the, what we had before up here, um, uh, the, the way this goes. Uh, what this what this condition says is uh, we start off with a, with a closed economy, but this could be a closed economy where some people 
uh, start off with debts and some people don't. And when we did with, uh, to, to match this up with the error to brew, we're gonna need to, um, we're gonna need to impose this additional condition. Okay. Um, now, we did that in our Python calculations. We automatically did that. If you go back and, and look at the calculations that we did, we built that in. And let's see where we built it in. So turns out starting, starting the system off with A0i uh, equals zero for everybody, that has a striking implication that we can call state variable gen degeneracy. And you may have suspected that there was something fishy what I, what I did uh, before um, in, the, in, in the following. In the following. Uh, this value function, it has A and S, um, but when I ended up calculating uh, continuation wells and so on, uh, it was just S in there. So, um, so there's, so it turns out if I start thing, things out like this, there's this property that we can call state variable degeneracy. And it happens in lots of models um, that are descendants of these um, models with zero securities. So that's although um, the key thing is that there's, there, there's two state variables in this value function within a recursive uh, competitive equilibrium uh, um, starting at this Markov state S0, uh, two outcomes are gonna prevail. There's gonna be two outcomes that prevail. Um, the first is gonna be, uh, and we saw this, uh, anytime we revisit the Markov state, um, everybody's gonna go back to zero financial wealth. So we're gonna to return to this and we're gonna return like to that initial condition uh, for everybody. And the initial condition just isn't the Markov state, but it was that wealth. That's the first implication. And the other thing is in that, e in that uh, recursive competitive equilibrium, financial wealth turns out to be an exact function of the Markov state. It's, you're, if you tell me the Markov state, I know your financial wealth in an equilibrium. So, uh, so this first finding says that the, uh, each household recurrently visits the zero financial wealth state with which he or she began life. And the second asserts that the exogenous Markov state is all we needed uh, to keep track of to, to uh, understand the, the opportunities, the state of an individual. So financial wealth turns out to be redundant. And that outcome depends critically on there being complete markets in our securities. And in other models that, that we study in macro, um, you know, starting with Friedman and Hall's um, linear quadratic permanent income model, um, there aren't complete markets in aero securities and financial wealth is not redundant. It's a key state variable. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, this kind, of, this kind of wraps things up. And these principles that I'm talking about here are, um, they're actually, they show up in these uh, examples that we did when we calculated um, these things using our Python code. And um, so um, that kind of is gonna wrap it up for now about this Markov uh, meets arrow.